Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. This evening, Imana Guy is training us on how to boost our sales by forming joint venture partnerships. Iman, I have a couple of questions that will help us get to know you. The first question is this, what is the best life decision that you have ever made? Follow my dream. The, the, and never settle for anything less. Follow your dream and, and never settle for anything less. Now, is that copyrighted or can I use that sometime? It's not copyrighted and totally can be usable. <laughs> but it's original. <laughs> but it is. It's actually a great mantra to live by. Well done. Second question, what impact would you like to have in the world? Well, as you know, I ended up on my deathbed to, uh, 10 days before my 27th birthday. And when I was on my deathbed, I decided if I get a second chance in life, I make a difference in the lives of 100 million people before I die. And I got lucky and I survived my deathbed. And that's what I'm going to do to make an impact in the lives of 100 million people before I hit my deathbed again. 100 million. Wow. Good for you. And the third and final question, what is one of your favorite quotes and why? I was actually thinking about that. And I was thinking that, you know what, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to give you one of my quotes that I give to my students all the time because that's my favorite quote although it's mine, but it's still my favorite. And it's this. The biggest mistake an entrepreneur can make is not making money today. Every single day as an entrepreneur, you need to go out and you need to generate income. And if any day you wake up and you can generate new income, that's the biggest mistake. Even if you are running a half a million dollar company or a million dollar company, if you are not adding new ways of generating income every day to your business, that's a mistake. Um, Good one. And a great one for this audience. Thank you. Uh, participants, would you please type your questions into the chat? And I will pose them to Iman at various points during his talk. Uh, now, you're going to be sent a link to the recording of this talk in a few hours. But I nevertheless encourage you to take notes because the act of taking notes is going to increase what you absorb by as much as 30%. <clears throat> Iman, are you ready to rock the stage? I was born ready. <laughs> She's all yours. Take her away. Awesome. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our presentation today on how to 10x your sales through joint venture partnerships. And I'm super, super excited to be here because many, many, many years ago, I started my business and pretty much from very, very, very scratch. And I'm going to get to that, what that means. And um, technically joint venture partnerships made a huge, massive difference in my business, in my life. And is, but as a result of that, I was able to uh, grow my business and get to where I am today. And I love to share about the joint venture partnerships and um, help people to understand more what joint venture partnerships mean, uh, how they work and how you can use them to increase your sales and to position yourself as a go-to expert and make a bigger impact in the world. Okay. Now, before I get started and go through like all the things I'm going to talk about, a few logistical items. Number one, make sure that you have a pen and paper um, to take notes because what I'm about to share with you has lots of information that is very useful and even one piece of the, of the parts that I'm going to share with you can potentially make the biggest difference in your business. And as I'm going through the presentation, you're actually gonna know what I'm talking about. Like even like one of the lines that I'm going to share with you can add potential deal that adds $50,000 to your income or $100,000 or $200,000 in your income. 
um, with what I'm sharing with you. Obviously, I can't guarantee anything because I don't know how you're going to implement things I'm going to share with you. There is a chance you just show up and take some notes and do nothing with it, which technically results in nothing, right? But what I'm going to share with you are all real life examples of how we are using these things in business and how you can, you can use them to grow your business. Um, number to make sure that you turn off any distractions. So for any chance, if you're checking Facebook or checking your email or you are, I don't know, um, um, you're on TikTok or wherever else, just turn off that distraction. What I'm about to share with you in the next 60 minutes is going to make the biggest difference in your business. And, and it just you, you deserve to get that difference and also implement those things in your life. So turn off any distractions. And by the end of this presentation, I'm going to invite you to join us at an upcoming event called Collaborate, which is going to be this weekend on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which will allow you to implement things I'm going to share with you tonight in real life this Friday, Saturday, Sunday, okay? So I'm going to share with you some of the ways to be able to benefit from joint venture partnerships. And I'm gonna talk about the benefits. I'm gonna talk about the challenges of it. But one of the challenges you are going to face is like, okay, Iman, this everything you said is awesome, but how do we find people that are ready about ready for joint venture partnership? And then that's actually this event that's happening this weekend on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, called Collaborate. And I'm going to invite you to come to Collaborate, a super affordable program uh, that you can be part of, and you can find joint venture partnership deals, and you can walk away with 15. 20, 30, 40 joint venture partnerships like many other of our attendees that attend, collaborate and find joint venture partnerships, okay? So I'm gonna teach you the basics. I'm gonna tell you how you use it. I'm gonna give you the opportunity to be able to really put it into work and benefit from it. Is that cool with everyone? We're gonna go to the chat box and say, that's cool with me, okay? Let's get to go to the chat box and say, that's cool with me. And while you're doing that, I actually wanna get you guys to implement, to, to to take action on things that we're going to talk about here. So when I get you guys go to the chat box and say, that's cool with me or say yes, or I'm with you or anything like that, do that because one of the things that it does is that every section that I teach, I'm going to ask you to participate in something that is changes the state of your body. And when it changes the state of your body, meaning that you go to the chat box or you raise your hand or I get you maybe do the shoulder moving thumbs up, anything like that, I'm getting to move the state of your body, which allows you to absorb content better. Is that cool with everyone? All right, raise your hand if that's cool with you. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to kind of get you guys moving so you can change the state of your body so you can learn better as you're going through this presentation. Now, a little bit about me before I continue talking for the next two hours and you wonder, well, who is this guy that is talking about all these things? First of all, my name is not I man or not I am a man or it's Iman, okay? So that's one thing that usually people come and just kind of don't know how to pronounce. Or, I mean, like I'm a man, but, it, but my name is Iman, okay? And uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I run multiple seven figure companies. Um, one of my companies that um, many people know is called, uh, is called Success Road Academy. I'm also the author of the book called Ultimate Course Formula, which is one of the top 100 entrepreneurial books on Amazon for the past 11 months straight. So for the past 11 months, my book has been the same amount of sales as books like Miracle Morning, like uh, The Art of the Deal, like E-Myth and lots of other books. And, um, and, and we're kind of a best-selling author that constantly uh, over hundreds of, um, hundreds of thousands of people are following what I share and, and teach. And um, besides Success Road Academy, one of the companies that I own is called JV Insider Circle, which is the largest JV network of entrepreneurs, coaches, authors, speakers, and program leaders. And with the JV Insider Circle, we help people to find joint venture partnerships. So during today, you hear me say the word JV a lot. So I'm going to keep saying JV, JV, JV. JV means joint venture partnership. I'm going to tell you exactly what that means and how it works. So if you don't know what joint ventures 
are, don't worry about it because I'm gonna actually explain to you. And I'm gonna teach you in the correct way. Uh, one of the biggest pet peeves that I have is this. You know, there are lots of online marketers out there who never studied online marketing. The way that they actually became these online marketers that they already know is that they went to an event and somebody was talking about something. That person also hadn't ever taken any online marketing course or any, any training. And this person heard from this other person that didn't know. And then they went and did something, they made some money. And then they started saying, well, I know how to do it. And then they started teaching others. And then now everybody's teaching each other wrong things. Okay. And then the problem with that is that yes, maybe if you're doing something, it's just kind of little and it works. But then when you don't grasp the entire concept of something, then it actually limits you on being able to benefit from it. Okay. So what I'm going to do today is to teach you exactly what these words mean and how you can benefit from it. So many times when you're in the industry and people use the word joint venture, technically all they mean is promotional partnerships. And in particular, they mean reciprocating pro promotional partnerships, which is one type of joint venture partnerships which I'm going to share with you. But that's not the whole world of JV partnerships. The reality is that people are leaving hundreds of thousands of dollars on the table every year with not understanding the meaning of the word joint venture partnerships and how they can benefit from it. So I'm going to share with you all those pieces of what exactly it means, what, what are the types of the joint venture partnerships. And when we cut to that part of the joint venture partnerships, actually how we can go to the details of it, okay? Now, uh, I'm known, um, as I said, I'm known as a managing partner of JV Insider Circle, which is the largest joint venture network in the world. And, um, and also I have a network of over 800 joint venture partners, okay? So um, that means that over 800 people are promoting one of my businesses, either it's Success Road Academy with our course creation course, or it's my JV Insider Circle with the JV Network or my not-for-profit, other things, right? So there are over 800 JV partners that are promoting us and I've made over 2000 JV partnership deals. Meaning that every day, technically, I'm showing up, I'm presenting, I'm talking to people, and I'm making deals. So everything I'm going to share with you today is a real life example. These are not the theory that nobody uses them, or I'm not using, I'm not benefiting from it. These are actually things that I'm doing every day. And I'm an open book. So if you ask me any questions about the details of a deal, or how we made the deal, or anything like that, I'm more than happy to share any of those things. Is that cool with everyone? Is that cool with everyone? Let's go to the chat box and with you. If that's cool with you, let's go to the chat box and with you. And what are we going to do? So the first thing I'm going to explain here to you is one simple concept that many people actually don't know the difference. I don't even have it in my presentation because I wasn't thinking about talking about this beforehand, but I'm going to share with you this right now. There is a big difference between business partnership and joint venture partnership. So many times people ask me, Iman, what's the difference between business partnership and joint venture partnership? And this is the difference, okay? In business partnership, you are partner in entire business, meaning that you are partners in the salaries of team members, you are partners in creating the foundation of the business, your partners in paying taxes together. And after you paid all the expenses and after you delivered all the promises that you've made to your partner, you're left with some profit. And then that profit, depending on your share in business partnership, gets divided between the partners that are involved in the business. Okay. So that's called business partnership. But what's a joint venture partnership? Joint venture partnership is when two ventures that are separate from each other come together and join forces and they are not partners in everything in the business with each other, but they are partners in one project together. And many times in that joint venture partnership, 
the percentages of payments and profits are preset. So whether the entire project makes <clears throat> a profit or the entire project, project makes a loss, it doesn't matter. Because the whole contract, the whole agreement is set beforehand. For example, in a promotional partnership, and I'm going to talk about all the details of these things. But let's say, for example, I talk to Roger and I tell Roger, Roger, I'd like to promote me. And from every sale that I'm going to make, I'm going to pay you 10% of the sales. Now, if I come and promote and we make sales, and at the end, I make 20 sales and I pay 10% to Roger, whether I'm making a loss on every one of my sales or I'm making profit on every one of my sales, I have to pay Roger that 10% because that 10% is in a joint ventureship deal. So in the joint ventureship deal, because this, the, everything, all the agreements are set beforehand. But if this was a business partnership, we wouldn't have that set agreement. We would have the agreement that, for example, Roger owns 50% of the business and I own 50% of the business. We would go and promote it together. And then we would pay our staff. I would pay our delivery costs. And if we would leave, we would, we would end up with a thousand dollar profit, then Roger would get 50% of that thousand dollars and would get 50% of that thousand dollars after paying taxes. Everybody with me? Everybody see the difference between the joint venture partnership deal and a business partnership deal, okay? Now, the business partnership deals are all related to the country that you are from. So if you are in Canada, there are different types of business partnership deals that are available to us than if you are in US. So the US has different type of rules and laws for business partnership deals. And if you are from Cayman Island, then you have different type of business partnership deals that that country allows. So technically it's a legal matter based on the laws of your country, okay? But that's not what we wanna talk about today. What we want to talk about today is joint venture partnership deals. And when it comes to joint venture partnership deals, you actually have a lot more features and a lot more benefits to a company. One of the biggest parts to that is that when you want to shape a joint venture partnership deal, you don't need to go and rebuild your entire business or set up a new company. With a joint venture partnership deal, you simply own your own company, Nobody gets access to any of your information matters. And all you're doing is just you're making a deal on one project. And you do that project between the two ventures and you're good to go. Now, doesn't mean the two ventures, you need to be two different companies, not at all. You can be two individuals and do a joint venture partnership deal. So if you're sitting there and you're, like, you're thinking, oh, I'm a solopreneur, I like what does joint venture mean? Like, don't worry about these things, okay? You can actually, it doesn't matter if you are a solopreneur, you're still a venture. If you are a $500, $500 million company, you're still a venture, okay? So then you can do the joint ventureship deals. Does this make sense to everyone? Everybody with me? Go to the chat box, I'm with you. Go to the chat box, I'm with you. If anybody's sleeping on the call, Let's go get you to go to the chat box down with you because these are important things to understand the difference. Okay, now, when it comes to the joint venture partnership deals, there are two types of JV partnerships. The first type of JV partnership deals are called promotional partners. And promotional partnership deals are in a format that one person is promoting somebody else, okay? So let's say, for example, I have a course, I have a program, and I would like somebody to help me and support me, okay? Then I go find a person who can put me on their stage. I find a person that can do a webinar. I, I find a person that has a mailing list, and that person can go out and email their entire list to come and buy my course. Well, that person is my promotional partner. So they are helping me promoting me, okay? They are referring clients to me. Now, that person is called a promotional partner. And that 
is something that in most online marketing classes in all other places, you hear as JVs. So when they say JVs, that's what they mean. They mean that you find a person that promotes you, okay? Except although it's part of it, but it's not the whole thing. And that's where the problem begins. Because the biggest part of the benefit in joint venture partnership is not in promotional partnership, but it's in production partnership. So what's the production partnership? In a deal, you either have a production partner making a deal with a promotional partner, or you have two production partners come together and create a project. And this is the mistake that most, most of these online marketing gurus make because what they may, what they think is that it's all about somebody promoting them, which is okay. That's promotion partnership. But the real profit in many joint venture partnership deals is that two production partners come together and create a new project together. So what I'm gonna do in the next 60 minutes, I'm going to talk about different kinds of promotional partners. We have five types of promotional partners. We're gonna talk about those different types of promotional partners and how you can connect with them, how you can find them and how you can get people promote you. Then we are gonna talk about production partnership and we're gonna talk about how you can take this whole to a whole new level and create things at levels that you couldn't even imagine you can create. And make partnerships to the level that's gonna blow your mind about the level and about the impact you can make with using production partnerships, okay? Now, let's begin with the promotional partnerships. And let's talk about the five types of promotional partnerships. Now, the first group of promotional partnerships are fans and friends. Now, I used to call these people sneezers before the pandemic happened. But then when the pandemic happened, I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm not going to call anybody sneezer because, oh my God, like you can't even breathe without a mask, let alone calling people sneezers. Okay. But who are the fans and friends. The fans and friends are people that know you, like you and trust you, and they really want you to succeed. They know who your target market is and they know what you can provide. And what they like to do is to promote you to get more customers so you can support more people. An example of that is for example, your siblings, your brother, your sister, your mom, your parents, your kids. These are people that already know you, trust you, love you, right? But here's the problem with that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm really eager in business, right? So when I ask my mom to have another sister for me so that she can refer more clients to me, my mom didn't accept it. She's like, no, 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 that's, I'm not going to give you just another sister. It's just not a viable business system to ask your parents to give you more siblings, okay? So although fans and friends are amazing, but there is a limitation of it. There is a limitation to it. And you can't really count on it as a major business strategy. But here is one of the ways that you can create fans and friends for yourself without having more siblings. And this is what it is by sharing your information freely with people that are interested in learning what you teach. Have you ever been to a seminar, to an event, to a conference, you're listening to a person and you're like, oh my God, this dude knows exactly what he's doing. And then you're like, but I don't want to, I don't, I don't need his product, but he knows what he's talking about. And then you're talking to somebody else and the other person says, I'm looking for a person like this. And you're like, hey, have you looked into this guy? And then they're like, no. And you say, well, let me tell you all about him because I listened to him just last week in the seminar. And like, right? And you just refer that person to that other person. You just became a fan of friends without becoming a client. Everybody with me? Now, here is the thing. The question here is, 
the, 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 the key to this is you going out and sharing your information and knowledge. Now, can I tell you a story? Because that's actually how I found my first ever customer in North America. In 2008, 2007, my wife and I decided to move to North America because I wanted to become an international professional speaker. I was looking at people like Brian Tracy, Tony Robbins, Oprah. I was looking at how they were always on the stage and changing people's lives and making good money. And I'm like, no, but I want to I wanna be one of them. I want to be able to do this. At the time, I was living in Iran and I couldn't speak English. And we said, okay, as a, with an Iranian passport, it's really hard to travel. So we want to move to North America to be able to get a North American passport and we can travel easier and learn English so we can have access to a bigger market. So we moved to North America, we moved to Canada in particular in 2009. And I was hoping that my money follow us and it didn't. And 2009 was right after 2008 recession. And when I started applying for one job after another, after another, nobody was hiring. So I was a person who didn't have any money, didn't have any connections, didn't have any network, didn't know the language, and I couldn't find a job and nobody was hiring. I went to Walmart, applied for, you know, said, I'm gonna wash toilets, I gotta do anything. Nobody gave me a job. That got me to be 17 days away from becoming homeless. I remember my wife, uh, I, was, I was riding a bus on a street here in Vancouver called East Hastings, which is the worst neighborhood in the entire Canada, which all the, neighbor, all the, all the homeless people live on. I was, I was riding the bus. I was looking at the street. I was strategizing how to live on this street with my wife. And one morning I woke up, it was 17 days away from becoming homeless. I remember it was February 14th, 2010. I woke up and I said this thing to myself. I said, if you don't give it to me, I'll build it myself. So if you don't give me a job, I build it myself. Have you ever had that moment that you give up hope on everybody else and you're like, I gotta do this myself? I gave up on getting a hope. I gave up on having hope on getting a job. I was like, if you don't give it to me, I'll build it myself. That day, I started a web design company, which that means is that I decided to sell. I'm a web designer. That's it. That's I mean, like there's nothing else to that, right? And at the time, I hadn't gotten any haircuts, so I started walking on the streets. I was looking at the haircut signs. It's like. $16 haircut for men. I'm like, that's too expensive for me. I can't get a $16 haircut. $12 haircut for men. Let me walk the street. Maybe I can find a cheaper one. And then I found a haircut for men for eight bucks. And I went to get the haircut. And the person asked me, what does your hairdresser ask you? Well, who cut your hair last time, right? But then my hair was so bad, he didn't even ask me that question. He said, what do you do, right? That's the first question they heard the rest ask you, what do you do? And I said, I teach people, I, I, I help people to increase their sales from the internet. And he said, can you tell me what that means? I didn't know what that means. I just came up with it just a second before that, right? And I'm like, when you're done with my hair, I'm going to explain this to you. So as he was cutting my hair, I was thinking about all the things I would want to tell him. And when he finished my haircut, he went to the cashier and I said, do you have a pen and paper? He gave me a pen and paper and I said, well, why people come to your place? And he started telling me, and he started, as he started telling me, I started designing his website on a piece of paper. And after 10 minutes of interviewing him, I turned back the paper and I said, if you have this website, it will increase your sales. He looked at the form, he looked at the page and he was like, Iman, you don't know this, but I'm one of the most connected people in Vancouver. And nobody has ever explained how I can increase my sales from the internet the way you explained it to me. Do you think he bought a website from me? No, he didn't. But here is what happened. Two days later, he called me on the phone and he said, Iman, I have a lady here sitting with me. She's been wanting to increase her sales for the past three years 
from the internet and she hasn't been able to do it. Can you sit with her and have a conversation with her to see if you can help her to increase her sales? I said, sure, absolutely. Later that day, we went to a Blends Coffee House, which is a local coffee house here in Vancouver. Went to that place, we sat together. In an hour, she wrote me an $1,800 check, which paid the rent of that month and bought us food. My very first customer came from a fan that became a fan because I decided to share information with him for free. That same customer paid me another $1,800 a month after. And after that, I got another customer from another person who exactly because I shared content with him, referred another $800 per month client to me. Long story short, in a year, I took that company to a six-figure company because I shared content every single day. Even though I had a really hard time speaking the language, but I was still sharing content one-on-one -on -one with people. Everybody with me? Everybody with me? Okay. So share, share, share every day and have a very specific ask. You see, one of the key to that was that I was telling people exactly what it is I do in a very simple language. I help people to increase their sales from internet. That's it. I wasn't making it complicated. That's called the USP, unique selling proposition. So I had this unique selling proposition with just one simple sentence. I help people increase their sales from internet and that was it. So that's number one, okay? Fans and friends to be able to do that. Number two, are called content-motivated promotional partners. Content-motivated promotional partners. Who are the content-motivated promotional partners? Content-motivated promotional partners are people that have a stage and they would love to put you on that stage. So think about this. Does your audience, does your target market listen to any podcast, attend any telesummits? participate in any gift giveaways? Do any of them go to any seminars or conference or event? They do. And how do you think those seminars, conferences, events are helping people and giving them value? It's through content. It's through content, okay? So that's very, very important for you to be able to share your content and information on a regular basis, okay? So here is one thing you want to do. If you find a person, an event, a conference, by the way, I'm sure that all of you have experience of this. Have you ever attended a seminar or event and you're listening to the speaker and you're like, I'm 10 times better than this guy. I'm 10 times better than this gal on the stage. How come he's on the stage or she's on the stage and I'm not? Some of you are thinking that right now. Here is how, here is why. Because you did not ask the organizer to be the speaker. And the other one did. Here is how you do it. If you ever find some of those events, conferences, seminars, you contact the organizer and you ask them the simple question, what does it take to be on your stage? <clears throat> and this is the worst thing you can tell them. You have to have me on your stage. If you email Roger with, you have to have me on your stage, right away Roger is gonna think, hell no, who are you? What are you talking about? But if you ask Roger, what does it take to be on your stage? Roger is gonna say, well, these are the four criteria that I need to see to be able to have, me on, have you on my stage. Do you have them? You say yes or no, and then you take it from there. Does it make sense? So this is a million dollar question. What does it take to be on your stage? What does it take to be the guest of your podcast? What does it take to attend, right? So what does it take? The third group of partners are called the favor motivated partners. Who are the favor motivated partners? Favor motivated partners are the ones that would like to promote you because they would like you to promote them back and support them back. Okay. What does that mean is, for example, if you have a podcast 
and there is a person who would love to be on your podcast, but then they have their own list. And you say, you know what? You can be on my podcast if you are willing to promote my webinar for me. And they want a favor. They want to be on your podcast, so they would like to promote you in return. Okay, so they are looking for is is a return promotion is a favor. Okay, so they're looking for some sort of reciprocation with you. And here is one of the things I always tell people. It's very important that you have a way to be able to reciprocate with people. Have a YouTube show, have a podcast, have a YouTube channel, have something. Doesn't matter what it is. Have a meetup group. That's actually what I did, by the way. That's when I founded Entrepreneurs International Network. I started the Vancouver Business Network back in 2010. The reason I started it was because of this, because I was looking for stages. Nobody was giving a non-speaking English person <laughs> a stage. Like I couldn't even speak the language properly. I, I, like I didn't know speech is spelled S-P-E-E-C-H. I used to spell speech as S-P-E-A-C-H. People had to correct me on things, right? And that, that's, when, that's when I began. That's like, that's in 2000, that's, that's Iman 2010 version of Iman. I didn't even know, like how to, how to, right? Let alone anybody wanted to give me a talk. But here's what I did. I founded a group on Meetup called Vancouver Business Network, which became the foundation of what you guys know today as Entrepreneurs International Network. Now, Vancouver Business Network gave me a stage. I started telling people, if you want to come on my stage, you have to put me on your stage. They wanted my stage so bad that they were willing to put me on their stage with my bad English and bad accent and everything else. And that's how I got my first 15, 20, 30 stages. And then the more I did it, the more I learned, the more I was able to do it. Everybody with me? It's not that complicated to find one of those Facebook. You can, you can easily start a Facebook group. Or you can start doing Facebook lives to it. That's not that complicated. So find a way to be able to reciprocate with people. Even if you don't have a large mailing list, you can start a Facebook group. You can start a LinkedIn group and work on it to grow that group. So now you can reciprocate with people pretty fast. Okay, now, the fourth type of JV partners are called the money motivated ones. The money motivated joint venture partners want money. It's as simple as that. That's all they want. They want money. They want to be able to promote you and they make money in return. So they say, well, if I promote you, how much money am I going to make in return? And you say, well, I'm going to be able to pay you 50% of every one of my sales or 10% or 20% of one of my sales. And they're like, okay, I like it. I'll promote you. I don't like it. I won't promote you. Make sense? There is nothing really to it. If they, if they make money, they promote you. If they don't make money, they don't promote you. There's nothing more to that. And the last group of people are called credibility seekers. Credibility seekers. And the credibility seekers are the ones that would like to promote you for your credibility. But guys, remember one thing. Many times I'm talking to people and people say, Iman, I'm a new way. I don't have any credibility. What are you talking about? Well, here is one mistake that you're making. You think credibility necessarily is always aligned with how long you have been in the market, but that's not true, always. I mean, it can be, but it's not always true. Okay. Remember that credibility, write this sentence down. This is a million dollar sentence. Credibility gets built with marketing. Credibility gets built with marketing, but you can lose or reinforce it with delivery. Credibility gets built with marketing, but you can lose or reinforce it by delivery. Delivery means delivering promises not Amazon delivery, right? Delivery means what you, you build it when you deliver the promises that you made to people. Now, what does that mean? A few years back, I was working with this guy called Jonathan Chow. One time I walked into a room, he was sitting in the office 
And I said, Jonathan, what are you up to? And I said, I'm thinking of doing a very large event. And I said, well, what's the event about? He's like, I have no idea. I said, who is the target market? He's like, I have no idea. <laughs> like, so what are you going to do? He's like, I have no idea. I just want to do a large event. I'm like, well, that's a plan for success. Yay. Literally two days later, two days later, I saw Jonathan again. I said, Jonathan, what are you up to? And he said, I know exactly what I want to do. I said, what? He said, I'm going to do Vancouver's biggest ever business barbecue party. And I said, well, have you ever done a business party? He's like, no. Like, have you ever done a barbecue party? He's like, nope. Now, like, well, that's a plan for success. But this one, this time I meant it. And here is why. Because I knew Jonathan. And here is what Jonathan did. He went to all business networks in the area. And he said, I am organizing Vancouver's largest business barbecue party. Would you like your members to come to it? Who would say no to that? Who would say no to be part of the biggest barbecue party ever happened? Nobody. In 45 days, he got 30 joint venture partners, 540 tickets sold, and there was a lineup the size of a block, the size of a hundred blocks that were waiting to get into his party. See, he built the credibility with marketing. There was nothing before that. He had zero experience with that. He sold 540 tickets, had a line of block, block of lineup waiting for getting into the event. So he built the credibility with marketing and he reinforced it with delivery, but he could lose the credibility if people would show up and there were only three people sitting there. Okay, you build the credibility with marketing, but you will lose or reinforce it with delivery. Everybody with me? Go to the chat box, I'm with you. Go to the chat box, I'm with you. Now. Iman, I just Roger, want to confirm that, there, that there's no questions. There are no questions. Wow. No questions. I'm either doing a really bad job or really good job here. So, <laughs> now, on the next part, on the next part, so these are the five types of promotion partnerships where you can get yourself on podcasts, radio shows, TV shows, other places, get others, promote you for your packages and offers and programs you have. Okay. Now, beside the promotion partnerships, we have production partnerships, which usually nobody talks about. And when it comes to production partnerships, you need to know that there are many options available. But you guys might have amazing assets at your disposal that you are not taking advantage of them. So what I'm going to share with you here, because production partnerships are all about creative deals, I'm going to share with you what are the options and assets you might have today that you can shape amazing production partnerships. And as I'm sharing this with you, I'm going to give you some of my real life examples of how I've used some of these production partnership assets to be able to make great deals. Okay. So the first type of those content production partnerships is content, content. Many of you today have content, have amazing content that you can share with others and people can benefit from it. Well, how can you shape production partnerships with your content? Here is how, for example, I'm working with a not-for-profit organization that that not-for-profit organization teaches people entrepreneurial skills. 
but they don't have training on those entrepreneurial skills today. So what they needed, they needed a person who has great entrepreneurial skills training and they reached out to me. Well, I have over 100 online courses, but one of the things that is happening with this is that all of those courses are designed for coaches, authors, speakers, and program leaders. And the target market for this um, uh, not-for-profit is people in recovery. So I can't get my course on, on of course, for authors and speakers and teach it to people in recovery because they're going to have different needs. Does it make sense? So I said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to customize my content for you. And I'm going to train your trainers. So your trainers can train my content. And it's going to be $80,000 every year for you to license my content. First year, I'm going to create the content and train your trainers. And then every year after that, your trainers can train my content inside the not-for-profit. Does this make sense to you? So I shaped this production partnership deal with them with my content. So the asset I brought with me was my content. The asset that they brought with them were their members. And together we shaped the deal. Okay, so that's one piece. Now, who is the promotional partner in that deal? The members will bring more members on board. The members will bring more members on board. So we are two production partners working together, and then there is a promotional partner that is bringing more clients on board. Everybody with me? Go to the chat box, say that's brilliant. Before, and that brilliant, go to the chat box, say that's brilliant. Okay. And that's the part, you guys, that everybody misses the point. Everybody misses the point when it comes to production partnership because they don't know how to shape these type of deals. Okay, now the next type of asset that you can have to a production partnership is your systems, is your systems. What type of systems? Well, some of you might have great sales systems. You know how to make sales properly. You know how to build a funnel. You know how to build systems, right? You know, do you have all those pieces? The other one is delivery. Some of you might have great delivery systems. For example, delivery systems can be something like some, maybe you, you know how to put together a membership platform. Maybe you know how to create the follow-up systems. Maybe you know how to organize three-day events in details. That's great. Those are delivery systems. Or maybe you have all the legal setup planned. So you have systems. The systems can be under anything. And, and then another person has something else. For example, in one of my business partnerships, in one of my joint venture partnerships I have with another person, he can teach people how to sell their content to corporations and organizations. He's brilliant in it. He has all the content for it. But he doesn't know how to sell to people one-to-one, -one, like how to sell to individuals. But guess who wants to go sell to corporations and businesses and organizations? Well, individuals. So he's brilliant in teaching individuals how to sell to corporations, but he doesn't know how to sell to individuals. Make sense? Right? So I said, good, let's do this type of deal. I help you to do your webinars. And I build the entire webinar platform and system in the back end. 
I know exactly how to organize a three-day event that people have great experience. And I know how to structure a mastermind that people can benefit from it. And I have the entire team for it. I bring that part of it, but I have no clue how to sell to corporations and organizations. And you bring that. And together we create this training on how to sell to corporations and organizations. I bring the systems and the teams and other things, you bring the content. And then we go get joint venture partners to product promotional partners to promote this thing that we created together. You see, he wouldn't be able to do it without me. I can't do it without him. But when we, max, when we mix it together, when we match these two together, now we have a brilliant package. So we created this package. And the first time we launched the program, we sold We sold 16 $10,000 package in a weekend. He wouldn't be able to do it without me. I wouldn't be able to do it without him. When we, come to, when we came together, that was a six-figure deal in a weekend. Everybody with me? So if you are sitting there, you have great content and you you don't have a person, you, but, but you don't know how to do some certain part of it, you might be able to actually shape it in a production partnership deal. But one thing I want to make sure that you guys pay attention to is this. If you are responsible for the sales part of that promotion of that production partnership deal, make sure you have set boundaries that the other production partner doesn't have a say over your sales systems. Because if they had idea about sales systems, then they would do it themselves. Now they're going to come, give you ideas. They're going to ruin it for you. You always want to make sure that in these production partnerships, there are very set boundaries. Who is doing what? Okay. Time for a question from Krishna. Sure. <clears throat> Krishna would like to know, of all the JV promotional methods, is there one strategy or tactic that you keep repeating? And how did COVID change the rules of the game? Okay. Um, so there are two sides of it, obviously, promotional partnerships and production partnerships. Okay. Uh, different people, use different parts of promotional partnerships, for sure. Remember, any promotional partner has all five motivations, but one of those motivations are stronger than other four. For example, if a person is money motivated, if they don't like you, they're still not going to promote you. Or if a person is money motivated and you are not sharing good content, the person still isn't going to promote you. But then there are many people that are content motivated. They want great content, but they are not really money motivated. So they don't care if you end up selling anything or not at the end. Okay. But all five of them, we use them on a regular basis and everybody is more comfortable with one piece. For example, I know people that constantly get content motivated promotional partners. I know people that constantly get money motivated promotional partners or credibility seekers. So the, the, the key here for you is knowing all five and be able to talk to the motivation of one of the five motivations of those people. Okay, Not that you choose one over the others. Okay. Now, when it comes to production partnership, I'll have to explain all of them to the end to be able to say which one of these is the one that makes the most sense. But for example, but, but, but it depends on you because sometimes you have assets for one of the assets, but you don't have the other assets. So then obviously you use the assets that are at your disposal. Does it make sense? 
So we follow with the production partnership, we just follow the assets that we have at our own disposal. Okay. Another question. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you stitch, this is from Ben, how do you stitch up your contractual part when it comes to production? JV, can you elaborate? I think he's saying, what about the legals, the contracts? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Roger, let me finish the whole thing and then I go and answer the questions because that, what that allows me to do is to be able to point out to the parts of the presentation that is left. So, uh, because I need to clarify a few things and then I'm gonna go back and answer this so it makes more sense. Okay. okay, then we can actually save the questions, then that would be great because then I can actually explain those pieces later. Okay, now, the next part, the next type of options that you have in the production partnerships is your network. Is your network, is the access to investors or supply chain or distribution network. And guys, that alone can be a game changer can be a game changer. For example, Roger and I, we are, uh, we are angel investors. So we work with new startups, we invest on their businesses, especially if they are tech companies in BC, right? In British Columbia, where we live. Um, we invest on those companies and we work with them, right? And, and we have connections and access to other angel investors. So sometimes a person comes to me and says, Iman, I want you to be my first investor. And I say, why? And they say, because you have access to other angel investors. You have access to other distribution network. You see, so they are using my access to network. They're using my access to investors. They're using my access to supply chain. And that's very valuable. So you got to know what you have in your case that is very valuable. Are you with me? So what type of access you have? And if you don't build one of those connections, network, supply chain, one of those things for yourself, because the more you have these type of connections and networks, the more valuable it becomes for you. Okay. Now, for example, let's say a person has access. If you watch Shark Tank, or what the, equ uh, the equivalent to that in bank in Canada is is Dragons Den, right? Many times you see that the entrepreneur that comes there to get one of the dragons or one of the sharks, what they are looking for is the supply chain that that person has access to, or the distribution network that that person has access to. They say, I would love to have you come on board because I know you have connections with Costco. And you can put my product in Costco and I'm willing to pay, give you 20% of my business to put me in Costco. You see, the asset is that access to the network. Okay. Now, the next type is market knowledge or topic knowledge market knowledge or topic knowledge. What's the market knowledge or topic knowledge? I've been teaching people online course creation for the past 11 years. Right? Between 11 years, I'm teaching people how to create and sell online courses. Well, one of the things with that piece is that I worked with a lot of people, right? That have created and launched their online courses. So a few months back, a company reached out to me who is developing an online course creation platform. And they said, Iman, we want you to be part of our company. We one of the one of the uh, one of the production partners of our company because of your knowledge. Because we can go and figure this out on our own, or we can bring you on board and you just have the knowledge and you can just tell us what to do. So what I can give them in an hour meeting would take them six months to figure out. And that's market knowledge, that's topic knowledge. And that becomes a huge asset when you are sharing production partnerships, okay? The next one is work contributions. 
many times. You say, I'm going to bring the work. You bring the knowledge. You bring the systems. I do the work. You bring the systems. Together, we're going to create one of the most amazing things that has been created before. You see, many people who want to do production partnerships are super busy with other things. One of the companies that I'm a production partnership in, my business, my, my partner in it, has my, my partner in it, his passion is completely doing something different. But he started the company eight years ago, and then he has to keep doing it. So when we partnered up, he said, I want to just bring the company, you bring the systems and the work. And if you bring the systems and the work, then we can work together. And he said, I have a question for you. Do you want me to do the work? Or are you okay with hire team members and I tell them what to do? I said, I'm okay with hire team members and you tell them what to do, as long as you are telling them what to do. I'm like, okay, that's fine because I have systems. I can bring that to the company. We got, we can, so, so, I, so work contribution opened the door, but my system saved me from not working 100 hours a week. Everybody with me? Right? And that's, that's the next piece. And the, na the next part is your designs. So whether you're an industrial designer or graphic designer, art designer, user experience designer, all of those things are actually huge matters when it comes to partnerships. I'm sure many of you guys have, have heard of a company called ClickFunnels. And ClickFunnels started with a partnership of two people, one marketer who had the market and topic knowledge who is Russell Branson, and with a tech person who had the systems and together they started the company. A few months into it, they realized their design sucks. And they found the best user experience designer. And we said, wait a second, if we hire this guy, then he's gonna be able to do this for others. We don't want him to design this for others. And he, the business partnered up with him. So they shaped a partnership with him. So he becomes their user experience guy. Four years later, that's a hundred million dollar company. You see, all three types of partnership that shaped the hundred million dollar companies on this PowerPoint, on this slide. It's a matter for you to understand and know what they are so you can benefit from them. And then the last part is any other types of licenses or programs or uh, trademarks or copyrights or anything else you have. Okay, so these are some of the assets you need for being able to share production partnerships. So talking about the deals, how to make the deal legally, well, it really depends on which location you are from and what type of things you can do. But there are a few things you need to pay attention to. The most important piece in the production partnership is boundaries is boundaries. And the boundaries are two things. Boundaries are what my responsibilities are. What do you want me to bring to the table and what I'm going to receive? So the two things, what, am I gonna, what, what, what do you need me to bring to the table and what am I going to get in return? Those two parts are actually the biggest parts that always cause problems with production partnerships because what they say is that they say, oh, we are production partners and we're doing everything together. Wrong. You never want to do that. I am bringing the sales system. You are bringing the content. When it comes to sales system, you only answer my questions. I don't answer questions to you. When it comes to your content, you can ask me questions and I just answer those questions, but that's it. I'm not going to meddle in your content. You're not going to meddle in my 
sales presentation. Those boundaries are extremely important. And that's why I love production partnership because in business partnership, there is this democracy that is happening, democracy that is happening, that's actually hurting the business. But let's vote on how I want the funnel be. Hell no. It has nothing to do with your vote. I don't care about your vote. You vote positive, negative. If you're not getting sales, you're not getting sales. If it's production partnership, it's not about your vote. It's about the sales. My job is bringing sales. I'm looking at the number. The number is wrong. I'm going to fix this for you. I don't care about your vote in business, in, in, in a production partnership. I care about my responsibilities, which is much better for the company. Everybody followed that. Everybody followed that, the difference between the business partnership and production partnership. And I always tell people, even if you're shaping business partnership, shape it with the boundaries of a production partnership. Even if it's within this partnership, you are shaping it with the production partnership boundaries. In my tech company, I don't know anything about the code that my team writes. I don't know anything. My, 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 my tech partner, because, because like in my, in my tech company, we have three partners, right? It's me, another person, and a tech partner. When the tech partner shows up and says, guys, let me explain. I'm like, please don't. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know the details of what you're doing in the tech side. Do we have any problem? It's like, no. I'm like, okay, then we are good to go. It's the boundaries of a production partnership, even if it's business partnership. Everybody with me on that? Does this make sense? Now. Here is the question. Here is the question. What are the three biggest challenges that we are facing when it comes to this? Number one, not knowing where to get started. Iman, that's super great and amazing, but where do we get started? Well, here is one place to get started. Start listing your assets based on things that I just shared with you. See what type of assets you have and what can you bring to the table? Because many times, you're not just bringing it to the table just because you don't know what assets you have. Okay? So that's number one. Make a list of your assets. Okay? Now, number two. Not having a roadmap and support to succeed. And this is very important because you want to be part of a community. You want to be part of a group that gives you a roadmap to succeed, that gives you the support tells you and other people in that community understand what joint venture partnership means. Because, I mean, it took me right now one hour, 15 minutes to talk about all the details of JV partnerships. Now, you know what that means, but other people don't. So you have to take another person to go through the same training to be able to shape JV partnerships with you. So you rather be part of a community that already all of them know what that means, and are ready to do it. They show up for doing it, for doing JV partnerships, finding JV partnerships. And the last one, not having access to JV platforms and community, not having access to that community, because uh, although like Entrepreneurs International Network is, for example, giving lots of training and lots of education, but the still, it's not a community that every week we are talking about joint venture partnerships and deals. Does it make sense? So you want to belong to a group that does that. And so that's where my introduction, what, 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 what my invitation for you comes to the picture. Okay. Because what I like to do, I like to invite you to join us at the event that we are doing this weekend called Collaborate. And at this weekend, you're going to be part of a community that already knows what joint venture partnership means. We have people who are running telesummits, who are running podcasts, who are running radio shows, who are looking for speakers. We have people who are program leaders. We have people who have systems, who can do the sales and the marketing. We have people, we have all type of people there that know what joint venture partnerships are, 
know what production partnership is, know what promotional partnership is. They're getting together and they're shaping partnerships with each other. And this is one of the largest JV networks in the world that happens. And this is in March 5th to 7th. Now here is the great news. Usually the value of this, not usually, but the value of this is $297 for a three-day event to go through the event and all of those pieces. But you can sign up for this event for free. And then you can upgrade to a VIP ticket, which is where I highly recommend to you to do for $47 USD. So with only 47 bucks, you can actually sign up and come to the event. And when you are going through the event, we can help you and support you to get JV partners. We connect to over 300 people right now registered to go to the event. So pretty much when you show up to the event, there are gonna be all type of people ready to JV with each other. We're gonna put you in the smaller groups. You're gonna to talk to each other. We're gonna give you the directory of all the people who are attending the event. We're gonna give you a one-on-one -on -one coach where you can go to talk to the one-on-one -on -one coach and clarify your topic, target market, ask them how you can get better JVs. It's a happening, happening, happening event. You can register for it for free. And then on the next page, it gives you the option to upgrade for 47 bucks. And I highly recommend to you, 47 bucks is worth every penny of it for a three day event. Come on, it's 47 bucks, right? So Roger put that link for you guys in the chat box. And if you're watching the recording of this, probably the link is gonna be in the description. If you are watching this event after March 5th to 7th, still click on that link because that will get you to the next collaborate event that is happening. We do collaborate on a regular basis. So even if you're watching the recording on YouTube right now, uh, you will be able to click on it and you go to the next collaborate. And that way we can help you and support you to be able to get joint venture partners. You're gonna be in the community that everybody knows, everybody understands and learn and know one thing. The best way for you to get JV partners is being in a community of people who know what, they, what that means and getting on the phone with people that are creative enough to shape JV partnership deals. I shared some of my deals with you today. There are lots and lots and lots of other deals. The reality is that I'm not really the smartest person when it comes to making JV deals and all of those things. I just know the structure of it. And I just am hanging out with people who know what JV partnership deals mean. That's it. And because we know each other and we connect with each other and we understand how it works, um, we just do it. And you wanna, you wanna, you wanna get, in, uh, get in the lineup and, and be part of it, you just gotta show up. You gotta show up, you gotta talk to others and you see how they're benefiting from it and, and, and do it. We, last event, we had people who walked away with 25 potential JV partnership deals. Many of them were promotional partnership deals. We had people who walked away with eight podcast interviews and three telesummits. That just in itself adds a thousand people to their mailing list. That's just one event, one three-day event. Would that change your business? Would that help you to improve your business? Add a thousand potential clients to your mailing list? And that's the part that these people that are coming to the collaborate, they are people that understand this. They've gone through the same training as you guys went right now. And during the event, we do more and more training. So we prepare you even more for it. And that's it. That's my presentation. Did you guys get some value? Learn a couple of new things? I, I think everyone got lots of value, Iman. There, there are still a few quest, a couple of questions, and they all float around the uh, formal arrangement, uh, uh, the contract, if you will, between JV partnerships. Would you please comment on that? Yeah, absolutely. So, a few things about the JV partnerships. And there are two types, as I said: promotional partnership and production partnership. Many times in promotional partnerships, you don't even have a contract, okay? For example, Roger has me right now on his stage. Roger and I don't have a contract for me speaking on this stage. You can have, but that would be like a speaking a stage, a speaking contract. Um, and, and you can just write it once and you can use it. But in 99% of the cases, I never sign a contract for speaking on any stage. Like nobody asks me 
to sign a contract for speaking on the stage or showing up on their podcast or radio show or telesummit or any of those things. Now, for production partnerships, sometimes these are bigger deals, okay? And then depending on how far you are going with it, you might look into it as having the contract as an independent contractor agreement. This is if you are going very deep with it. Then you may have it as an independent contractor agreement that the production partner become an independent contractor of your company and they're bringing some pieces to it and you're bringing another piece. Or you can have the contract as a joint venture partnership deal. And if you search on Google for joint venture partnership deals, uh, sorry, joint venture partnership contract, you will be able to see a lot different versions of it. As I said, these are very creative processes. So it really depends on what your thing is, but always in a contract, you want to have the responsibilities and the, and the compensation plan for each party, okay? So I want to have the uh, responsibilities and the compensation. Those are the two most important things. Obviously the foundation things like, uh, uh, um, now the English is not helping me, but indemnity and um, like a release of um, other things, um, those type of things, those are, those are standard pieces of, uh, of the contracts that, I mean, any lawyer can tell you or any template most likely has that. Uh, but, but then the most important part is make sure that you have the list of responsibilities. Um, if you think about an independent contractor agreement and you, you put in, in a JV partnership agreement, you put everything that you put inside an independent contractor agreement. Um, and, and then you're gonna be good to go pretty much. And by the way, I'm not a lawyer. I can't give you legal advice. You gotta ask your lawyer, but generally that's what I do. I can tell you what I do, right? So that's what I do. Iman, can uh, people go to uh, collaborate initially for free, check it out and then upgrade to VIP for $47 for the three days? Yeah, absolutely. So the free ticket, what the free ticket gives you is, is, a, is a live stream of the event. So you can actually get the free ticket, which I highly recommend to you get the free ticket anyways. So go to that link that Roger shared and enter your name and email to get a free ticket, okay? Now what that does, that gives you a basic ticket, which means that you can watch the event, but you, you won't be on Zoom. So you won't be able to network with others and you won't get access to the directory, but you can learn a lot because we have lots of training in it, right? And then if you want, you can upgrade to the VIP ticket. Obviously, I highly recommend to upgrade to VIP ticket because in the VIP ticket, you go to the networking circles, you connect with each other, and you also get a one-on-one -on -one coach uh, that will talk to you for 15 minutes, all this, uh, that, that will talk to you about your topic, your target market, how you introduce yourself, and all those parts, okay? So, but definitely you can go to, you can get a free ticket and then, and then upgrade on the first morning, if you wish. But get a free ticket right now anyways. Um, a question has been asked, what time of the day does the event take place? I'm replying, but I want to make sure I'm accurate. Eight to five Pacific time for each of the three days. Is that correct? Yes, it's 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific time. Sometimes we will say, Mom, what if I can't attend the entire event? That's totally fine. Attend the first couple of hours so you know what's happening at the event and then attend any other parts of the event that you can. That event is amazing, guys. Like we have the uh, we have something called a hot or not where you can actually unmute yourself and say, this is the title of my book. This is the title of my webinar. This is the title of my podcast. And people, over like 100 people sitting there tell you that's a hot name or, or not. We have something called the shark attack where people are gonna come and pitch the sharks. Sharks are people who have a mailing list of over 100,000 people. And we have six sharks coming to the event and people are gonna come and, and, and pitch to the sharks and say, I wanna do this. And then the sharks are gonna say, yes, this is a good, uh, yes, we're gonna promote you or not. And they're gonna give them feedback. Uh, we have public speakers, we have the networking circles, um, so on and so forth. There's so many, so many things happening. 
um, the, the entire event is gamified. So you can actually win hundreds of dollars uh, just by attending the event and going through the event and um, lots of other things. Okay. <clears throat> okay, lots of people are saying thank you, Iman. And on behalf of uh, EIN, VBN, uh, uh, really, I'm speaking on behalf of 75,000 entrepreneurs. I want to thank you profusely as well. Absolutely. Thank you very much for having me here. I'm excited. And yeah, hope you guys enjoy the rest of the night. <laughs>